Okay. We're rolling. Are you ready for this? Sure. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Jimmy from MTB Travel Review. I'm on a road trip back from North Carolina with Richie Rude. Willem Cooper. Never done this before, but figured we'd do a little chat and make a little video on the road. Today, we're gonna talk about five things that helped me become a better, safer, and faster mountain biker. Now, I've been riding for maybe three years now. I've progressed pretty quickly, just being around the right people and pushing really hard, but there's a few key things that really helped me get to the next level and things that I, I just wasn't aware of and wasn't knowledgeable enough to know early on in my riding career. So here are five things that helped me become a better, safer, and faster mountain biker. First things first, I think one of the most important lessons I've learned is the importance of hydration and fuel on and off the bike. Uh, when you're pushing yourself as an athlete to the endurance limits that we do on a mountain bike, no matter how you're riding, your body takes on a lot. You're really abusing your body and pushing it to new limits and you need to make sure it has the fuel it needs to keep going and pushing those limits without breaking down. Now, first and foremost is hydration, obviously. Uh, I do a lot of riding. I tend to not drink a lot of water. Willem actually yells at me all the time because I'll go on a three hour ride and only drink a bottle of water and not really pay attention to how much water I'm consuming. Um, for me, I've started working lately with Precision Hydration. Uh, there are multiple different companies out there that do hydration products to help you add in electrolytes, but I really try to focus on, with any ride, uh, drinking you know, at least a bottle of water an hour for me. It's different for every person. If you wanna learn more about hydration, there's a great Purple Patch podcast um, with Andy Blow, who heads up Precision Hydration, uh, that really walks through some of the science of how your body releases electrolytes and sodium and how it reabsorbs it and what you need as an individual. Another thing for me is obviously just fuel, just making sure I eat on my ride. I try to now eat something every hour when I'm out there. For me, I tend to stick to Honey Stinger and Kate's Real Food. Both great products really designed for athletes out there pushing themselves, but everyone kind of has their own ideas and their own needs for their body and that's something you kind of have to figure out. Willem, what are your, what are your thoughts on hydration and fuel and what do you kind of use for a standard you know two three hour ride out there uh typically i will bring if i'm gonna go out for two hours i'll bring two bottles so i have one on my bike and one in my bib or fanny pack or whatever you use and you try to drink about a bottle an hour uh, i'll put just straight up water in one bottle and then a tablet or a little bit of pineapple juice or some sort of sodium supplement in the other bottle uh, for two hour rides, I generally will bring uh, something really light and easy to eat. And I tend to like a go go squeeze. You can get them at the supermarket. It is literally baby food, they come in nice pouches. Effectively, it's, <clears throat> it's applesauce, so it's a good little hit of glucose. They're fairly substantial, so you feel like you actually ate something, but they don't upset my stomach. So you really only taste it once, not like you start tasting it again, burping up on the climb. Uh, on a longer ride, uh, I'll bring a few go-go squeezes and recently I've been using a lot of Kate's bars. I like the Kate's bars a lot because they're not dry, they're not, it's not like just taking a spoonful of peanut butter and trying to eat that while you're pedaling. They, they're generally fairly moist uh, and you can kind of nibble on those on the whole ride. That's, that's typically my go-to and in a racing situation I coach all the kids uh, and guys and girls that after every stage you should try to have even like half of a gel or just something never let yourself feel hungry during a race that can not only be distracting but it also takes away from your ability to perform solid i've spent a few days with richie now too and, and one thing i've noticed is he's kind of always <laughs> always hydrating and always eating he doesn't eat a ton he has a, a relatively strict diet for what works for him but richie any any thoughts, any wisdom on hydration and fuel? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much agree with what Willem said. I think you should try and have a few hundred calories an hour at least. I mean, when you're doing only an hour or so riding, it doesn't matter as much, but 
you know, I usually do like uh, like a hydration mix in my bottle. Like I use the Rhino Power stuff, which is pretty good. But um, if you're gonna, you know, being fueled, you're gonna feel good and you know not have low energy. So it's always good to eat and have some snacks around. There you go. So next up on the list uh, for me, and this is something that that I've been doing a ton of recently, is just working with a trainer or somebody that's that's very knowledgeable in all aspects of mountain biking and. This means everything from strength and mobility and the basics of, of building up your body's ability to handle the work that you put in on a mountain bike, but also just everything from bike setup and really you know learning how to function with your bike and make your bike work work with you and not against you. And then everything from your attack stance and just, just how to approach a trail system. I have been riding for a few years and I've been pretty successful with my amateur racing. Um, but I started working with CCF and Willem recently and it's been honestly night and day with with what I've been doing what I thought was right which was honestly completely wrong and my riding is now turning a corner and I was really in a tough spot where I thought you know I don't understand how these guys are going so fast and, and I'm just never gonna be able to ride at that level and even in this past weekend in North Carolina uh, I've, I've learned a ton and been working with Willem on, on my posture on the bike and, and how my bike is set up and it's it's been night and day, and I was able to put down some solid runs and even give give Richie a chase. And it's a big deal. So, you know, I think that for me is, has been a huge deal. And a lot of people will say, you know, I can watch videos and I know this and I know that, but the one-on-one -on -one training and having someone like Willem sit there and point out things and walk me through a trail and, you know, do this trail 10 times with little tweaks is a big deal. Willem, what would you add to that as a trainer yourself? Uh, I, I obviously like training and wish I had training when I was younger. It would have probably prevented a lot of injury, concussion, and heartache with race results and everything else. The thing that I really wish I knew when I was younger and I try to tell anybody that'll listen is that to go faster, you have to slow down. And what that means is, to go faster, you don't just hit a trail faster. You have to learn how to carry momentum and where to look and what to do and how to breathe and how to push. And there really is kind of a science behind it. Uh, and when I was younger, I just thought faster was faster and I would lay on the ground a lot. Pretty confused on why I couldn't figure it out. Carver 510s here with the sweet lace cover. And this is them in action. They hook on, up on everything. Ready? Are you ready? As I got older, you get wiser. And uh, now I like to share that information with people like Jimmy and even really young people and even just someone getting into mountain biking that wants to try it to keep the, the risk of injury down. Uh, yeah, you really just take time to learn the technique right and, and acknowledge that you're gonna have bad habits. I even have bad habits. And that you always have to work on and making sure your body position's right, that you're not over braking or under braking, you're shifting in the right spots and just really being efficient when you ride and efficiency will lead to more speed. One thing I've noticed, you know, especially hanging out with people like Willem and Richie is that no matter how good you are as a rider, it, it's there's always room for improvement. And that's one thing I've noticed, especially with Richie. I mean, he's him and Willem are just back and forth the whole time just talking about technique and whether it's, you know, stretching in the morning, whatever it is, it's like these guys are always on it. You know, they're they're from my you know perspective at the top these are elite riders they're at the top of the game and to see that they're still working on it constantly is it's made a big impact and just you know one of the reasons i love this sport is you can always improve you can always be better there's always tweaks rich anything you'd add from a training perspective yeah i mean i think like at least going like in the gym it kind of teaches you kind of like how your body moves and kind of what things you can work on are little imbalances and it's just like kind of makes you like rethink how your body moves and it can translate to the bike pretty well you know if you're doing the right thing so yeah. one thing I want to add is parking lots drills never end doing hip hinging drills figure eight drills body position check drills and we do that forever uh, I mean Richie posts pictures of him bouncing around or videos of him bouncing around on trees working on just being aware of his bike I go cruise around town and just carve corners and, and just 
focus on body position that never goes away and it doesn't matter how good you are you can't forget the fundamentals next up on the list and this is one thing that you know having jumped into mountain biking off of a craigslist bike and and really just finding the right guys i mean I have a lot, personally, a lot of anxiety and a lot, you know, I'm, I'm relatively introverted. So when I first started mountain biking, I jumped into it and just, you know, realized that if I wanted to learn, I, I had to be willing to, to step out of my comfort zone and ride with people that are faster with me. One of the ways I, I progressed early on is, is with the Team Granite guys. You know, the Team Granite, a lot of the guys have been riding for 10, 15 years. They come from an old school downhill background and and they really took me under, my, under their wing and, and for the first year, I mean, first two years really, I would just chase these guys around and normally was, was relatively horrified of everything I was doing, but I would just chase these guys. I, I trusted in their guidance and that they wouldn't take me over anything that I couldn't handle. And I did some stuff that would blow my mind blind. I mean, it's, it's stuff that I would be horrified of if I walked up to it, but I had confidence in them and, and learned to have confidence in myself. The more I hung around faster riders, whether it was Team Granite or now hanging around Willem and being able to pedal around with, with Richie a little bit, makes a huge difference. You know, you, you don't need to necessarily keep up with everyone. To be out there with them, pay attention to what they're doing, you know, learn their lines, learn how they think. I mean, just going on rides when it comes to endurance, you know, instead of just going and moseying around by myself when I thought I was fast, I went out with Team Granite and got smoked. I went out with, I mean, this is almost four years in, I went out with CCF ride with Willem and his crew and got smoked. I was the guy in the back of the pack, which I wasn't used to, but it forced me back into my training and forced me back into a regiment to be faster. So I think it's important to step outside of your comfort zone and 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 uh, suck up your pride and really just ride with people that are better. There's always someone better, and the way I see it is that's just another person to learn from. What do you think, Willem? I like that mentality and, and I benefit from that with riding with Richie a lot. One of the things that I found helps me a lot is actually riding with people that can learn from me. So when you ride with someone who's not quite as good as you or as experienced as you, like you've been doing with Brian, and you start teaching, if you can teach a skill, it means you know the skill. And it also makes you self-analyze and reevaluate what you're saying and doing. A lot of times when I work with somebody on the trail, if we're dissecting trail lines and trying to figure out the most efficient way. Half the time I'm in a session teaching someone and I find a new line because I didn't really stop to look at it. So taking the time to really figure out how to analyze yourself and tell somebody or guide somebody, it will help you ultimately reevaluate and keep moving forward on your own. Richie, you ride with a lot of guys that are faster than you or what? There's no yeah. one faster than him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's always good to ride with other people just because they, you know, might interpret a trail different than you. Like I know it's it's fun with all my teammates, Sean, he rides, you know, trail differently and I know like even when I follow my teammate Jubal, he's you know, deadly when he gets to a bike park trail and it's sometimes hard to keep up with him. So yeah. Faster or slower, I think it's good to follow people and just kinda get a sense of you know, there might be a different way to you know, ride a trail and yeah, it's good to look at it and take the time. Yeah, solid advice. Uh, next up on the list, and, and this is something that really uh, shined for me this weekend, but I, I think it's important to stay humble and know your limits. Now, I am I jumped in with some really fast guys with Team Granite. I jumped into racing, and I've I've been chasing some fast guys down some trails that, that maybe at times I wasn't ready for. Um, and I've, I've put myself in some dangerous situations, but one thing's for sure is you, know, you want to push your limits, you want to face your fears, but, but you also need to know where to draw the line. And, and one thing one of my buddies, Glenn Davis from Team Granite, told me early on is, you know, I think I was upset about a big rock feature up in North Conway, and I sat there for like 45 minutes and I got my own head and was just bouncing around. And once I get in my head that much, I know it gets dangerous. And Glenn looked at me and was just like, listen, that rock's not going anywhere. Like you can always come back, you can always do something bigger. If you're not ready, if you're in your own head too much, you know, it's not worth getting injured. It, you don't have to be a superhero, you don't have to impress anyone. And the one thing I love about a lot of the people that I ride with is, is there's no pressure. You know, Willem will tell me, you can do that and if you want to, go ahead. 
but he's also going to tell me if you're not comfortable and you're not feeling it, like don't do it now. Come back later or, or do something else. Just move on and, and don't let it ruin your whole day. There's actually a feature and there's going to be another video about a, a feature I faced at Canugo, which is something that was well within my limits and Willem towed me into it, but I got into my own head. I got jittery and got nervous and I got stiff and I crashed pretty hard. It was dangerous and luckily I, I walked away you know relatively unscathed but it's one of those learning experiences it, it knocked me off my off my high horse you know going to a new trail system and, and facing a new obstacle and, and hitting the ground hard and eventually I got back up and did it again and, and ended on a solid note but yeah know your limits it, it's not worth getting injured and being down for six months so so stay within your grounds and and you know have fun at the end of the day that's that's why we mountain bike what are your thoughts on that Willem I agree uh, and also know when it's time to push the limits a little bit, but do it with a plan. Don't just go, all right, well, this is out of my comfort zone. I'm just going to send it. Never do that. If you don't have an approach to a new feature and you're completely freaked out and you're not, you're not calm and confident within yourself, that's not the day to do it. If you're calm and confident within yourself and you know you can execute it, but it's just outside your comfort zone, be prepared and you can do that. But learning that about yourself, it takes some time and no matter what, you're going to have an error or two where you're going to end up on the couch for a couple of days learning what that limit is. But that's also half the fun of mountain biking. Yeah. And Richie, I mean, you're obviously dealing with some of, you know, the finest racing in the world. Do you ever find yourself in a position where, you know, you really have to push your limits or you, you get uncomfortable and know today's not the day? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely situations where you kind of got to, yeah, like take a step back and kind of plan how you're going to attack something. But I think... One thing about racing is you kind of got to hit stuff at like 90% and be careful about things. But yeah, I mean, I love to push myself as well. And, but usually I'm confident you know, with myself in doing so. Yeah. The, the mentality behind racing, at least for myself, is a lot of times there'll be a feature on a race course that on a normal day, just free riding, I wouldn't hit. But because it's on a race course and you know it's a faster line, your mentality towards it changes. And you're like, well, if I want to win, I have to decide if I'm going to be willing to risk this or not. Uh, there's this, there's one instance that I really remember is in Duria, Pennsylvania. They used to do a, a race there, and there was this road gap. It is extremely sketchy. Ultimately, it was really easy. I wouldn't do that unless I was there for a race. There's no way I would show up to that and hit that free riding. But because it's on a race, your mentality and your approach does change a little bit. So as you're getting into race, and keep that in mind. But again, keep that keep in mind that having confidence in what you're doing is always the most important thing. Because if you go out something second guessing yourself, that's not a good move. Don't do that. I guess too, it's like when you're racing, it's like don't. I feel like I pick lines that like I know I can hit over and over again, and like they you can you know like almost get faster at it. It's like I feel like people make mistakes. Like you like have this line that you like have to do, and like you're nervous about hitting it. It's like well, you know, find a different one that you're confident in. It's like don't just take because everybody else is doing it one that's easier for you and you know, maybe it's a second slower just do it and you find up hitting it faster than if you try to take the sketchy you know quick line yes yeah i agree with richie on that there's actually an instance in montana when he, we were talking about a line that sort of cut off a corner a bit uh completely legal cut off on the corner but i went to it and was looking for it too much and hesitated a ton and, and i told him that and he goes when in doubt main line full commitment and that always stuck with me after he said that to me because he's completely right don't waste your time trying to find all the sneaky lines if you're if you're having a hard time finding them or remembering them or setting yourself up for them just like Richie said main line full commitment that's always going to be faster and generally a lot safer than trying to spend too much time looking for the sneaky lines yeah all solid points and something I've experienced racing as well and you know, it's not worth going down in a race run. You're going to learn 30 seconds, and it's not just racing. I mean, going down on, on any ride, you know what I mean? You're going to put yourself in a position where it could be hard to come back from. And like Willem said, you know, just to reiterate, I think, you know, one of the biggest things, again, I learned early on is that, you know, hesitation is the most dangerous thing on a mountain bike. Whatever you're doing, you know, if it's in your comfort zone and you're confident, you, you just, you have to commit. You really do. We rode Riveter yesterday which is dirt jumps i haven't been on a dirt jumper bmx bike in 15 years and it was like you know willem told me if you want to hit the big line hit the big line and you know i got in my head and thought it through and i was like i know i can do this 
and and on a dirt jump, you, you know, once once you're going, you really you have to fully commit, or it's not going to work. So, if you hesitate, it can get really dangerous really fast, especially on chunkier stuff or big rocks. I mean, there's there's just a lot of stuff to hit. So, make sure that you know if you're going to do something, just maintain your confidence, follow through. You don't want to pull out at the last second. Either do it or don't, and move on. All right, so number five and the last thing I wanna to touch on and, and something that really resonates with me and, and my impatience is that mountain biking and any endurance sport is really, it's as people say, a marathon and not a sprint. I come into things and I, I typically wanna be the best as fast as possible. And a hard lesson I had to learn with mountain biking early on, especially jumping in with some fast guys and jumping in racing, is that you know my body has limits my abilities have limits and it just takes it takes time to learn not only how to handle a mountain bike how to train how to fuel all of the aspects of mountain biking take time to learn i thought i'd come into mountain biking and be on top of the podium in the first year that wasn't the case my first year racing was littered with crashes and disappointment and looking back now those should have been more just learning lessons as opposed to disappointment because it's all part of the process. You know what? It's what makes mountain biking or any any sport that you commit to on this level that special. You can always progress, you can always learn, but you just have to keep at it. You have to keep training, you have to keep practicing, and you have to stay around the right people. Practice, practice, practice. I mean again, being around Willem and Richie, you're two top riders in my eyes and two of the best riders I've ever been around. And they're always learning, they're always pushing, they're always training. I mean, it's you wake up every morning while we're here in North Carolina, it was like, we want to ride, you know, how can we make this effective? How can we get the most out of it and continue to improve ourselves? And I know Willem is a huge advocate of practice and training and repetition. So give us your one-two punch on this. Uh, well, obviously consistency and practice makes perfect are, are pretty basic things to say. Uh, my biggest piece of advice and something that I wish someone had told me when I first transitioned from racing downhill to getting ready to go race enduro. Um, when I started doing longer endurance rides, I used to ride with this guy, Mike LeBlanc, who now is up in North Conway a lot. And whenever I would ride with him, I would dread it because I would absolutely suffer. I'd never mentally been in as dark of a place. My body would shut down. All of that stuff would just be miserable. You're in that ride, you're, gonna, you're thinking to yourself, when is this going to end? This is the worst. And then at the end of the ride, you start to realize, wait, it does end, and I want to keep going back. So basically, when you get into mountain biking, especially endurance-style mountain biking or any sport, be prepared for those dark days at the beginning and learn to embrace them and consistently keep doing them. Obviously, don't overtrain yourself. You'll learn how to do that pretty quickly. But just consistency is key, and always know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that that misery is going to go away and you're going to get home, feel better for it, and want to go back. Um, and then to, to add to what he's saying, yeah, just constantly always working on your craft. If you have a bad race, um, instead of being frustrated and go, man, I just need to go faster or whatever it might be, walk away from that race going, okay, here are two or three things that I did poorly, and here are two or three things I'm going to actively try to execute better next race, and just take it two or three steps at a time every race, especially with enduro linking an entire enduro race together, stage after stage, having your hydration right, your mindset right, remembering the lines. There's so much going on. It takes at least a season or two before you actually put together an entire race. You might have a few flashy stages here and there. You might have a weekend where you think you did pretty well, but you can't replicate it. It's really difficult. That's why I have so much respect for someone like Richie, who time after time, he just puts together a race. He goes, all right, well, I'm a little bit behind going into the last stage, and he just has this extra knob. knob. He, can, he can crank it up. That is a unique gift. Not everyone has it. That's what sets him apart. But just being able to put together a race consistently, good results, making small steps, taking the time to understand there's going to be ups and downs, and just appreciating it and having fun with it. Yeah. And, I mean, Richie, you've been doing this for, you know, a few years, I guess they'd say. Like, what have you found over the years and how important is consistency and practice to you to get to the level that you're at yeah it definitely is i mean like you kind of gotta you know train how you race right so yeah just keeping things consistent and you know trying to stay up on you know how you ride your bike is definitely important anything else well yeah don't forget to travel and look around and see the sights 
uh, I've raced for a long time with downhill and realized I got into all these beautiful places and never actually looked around. Take a second, look around. Mountain biking will bring you to some pretty cool places. It'll introduce you to some really cool people and give you experiences you'd never have any other way. So just appreciate it and remember that's why you mountain bike. It's just because it's fun and it brings you cool places. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so I mean, Obviously the channel is MTB Travel Review. That's how this all started. I got in a bike, I went out in the woods and I was like, wow, this this is a beautiful place and a place that not, you know, maybe everyone can see. So, you know, this trip down to, you know, North Carolina with Richie and Willem was huge. And even with racing, I, I tend to go to races and I'm so focused on racing that I forget to look around. So no matter what you're doing, have fun, you know, continue to progress and stick with the sport and help people around you. and. You know, you'll meet a lot of good people and you'll find that most people that are on mountain bikes are good dudes. So yeah, keep at it guys. Thanks for checking out the page as always. If you like this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and keep riding guys. You.